All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I'm in this 2013 Mercedes C220 CDI, but that isn't the subject for today's video. Today, we're on the way to go and pick up a Fiat Panda that I've just bought for £250. I really like the Fiat Panda. I couldn't tell you why, because the build quality is poor. They're not the most spacious or practical. They're not the best to drive or look at. Thinking about it, I don't really know why I like them. I just do. They're just honest. An honest little city car that'll get you from A to B. Just don't expect it to get you to Z or Z. Z. You might be wondering why this little Fiat Panda is so cheap. Surely you can't find a working driving car these days for £250. Well, let's find out, shall we? Because I don't know a great deal more than you do. One thing I do know is that this has done 150,000 miles. So quite a lot of miles for a little car. I just think that at £250, I can't really go wrong, can I? Famous last words. Right, I'll see you there. Well, we're here. What a little beauty that is. We've got a missing wheel trim, driver's side front. It's bright red. No roof bars. Oh, we've got matching wheel trims on the passenger side. Look at that. It's from the northeast of England, judging by the reg. And we've got a lot of lacquer peel on the bonnet, some peel on the wiper arms, cloudy headlamps. The rear, yeah, the near side rear door looks like it's had paint. What a treat. Tires look all right though, skinny little tires. Right, let's do a quick vehicle history check using Car Vertical. Tell us a little bit more about it. So we're gonna to go to carvertical.com and type in the vehicle reg, which is November Kilo 10 Echo Golf Foxtrot. It's really clever this. For the price of a round of drinks in the pub, it'll check to see if it's been stolen, ever been involved in any accidents, has outstanding finance on it. It just gives you a little bit more information before you hand over any cash. Now for 250 pounds, it doesn't really matter if it's been involved in an accident, but forewarned is forearmed, or is it the other way around? Anyway. If you want to do one of these checks yourself and I urge you to do so before handing over any money, then click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. That offer isn't just for your first one, by the way, you can use it every single time. I recently bought a VW Phaeton and before I went to look at a single car, I spent half an hour first on Car Vertical, checking them all out. It's really important that you do that. Right, this report is ready. That is a Fiat Panda. Check. It's found the mileage to be genuine. It's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, and there's no outstanding finance. So we're all clear. It was registered in the UK in April 2010. On its first MOT, it had an oil leak. Surprise, surprise. By the time it had its second MOT, its offside rear shock absorbers were slightly worn. Then it failed on a tyre. Bit of a checkered history, this one. Let's see if it's got any MOT on it whatsoever. Ah, it's got an MOT until next September. There are a few advisory items. Offside front suspension arm pin or bush worn. Rear tyre slightly damaged. Parking brake lever has little reserve travel. Offside rear upper shock absorbers have slightly worn bush. And windscreen damaged, but not adversely affecting the driver's view. That means a stone chip in the window. That's a little bit fussy, isn't it? Let's go and have a look around it then. I've got the one key. Let's go and have a look. Well, it does look a little sorry for itself, but for 250 quid, quite happy with that. We've got a triangle tire on the front. Actually, that could be the spare, you know. It's on about five mil. Lack of peel on the wing there. Actually, paint peel because it's rotten. Back straight on the panels. We've got a Michelin on the back on about four mil. Needs a good clean. This. This could actually clean up very well. No roof rails. Always quite like those roof rails. Moving around the back, we've got a Springfield Motor Group plate. Ne38. Whereabouts is that? I'm not sure. Hanging off wiper blade there. Need a new wiper blade. Just very dirty, but we've got the parcel shelf in there, so that's fine. Does the remote lock it? No, it does. Moving around the front, we've got a non-matching plate from Halfords. We've got stone chips, which has caused all this lacquer peel here. The wiper arms are a bit corroded, need some matte black. But it looks all right, doesn't it? Have we got a matching? Oh, we do have a matching triangle. Maybe I'm wrong about the spare. 
So we've got triangles on the front and Michelin's on the back. Look at that. That's on about three mil. I don't even know which model this is yet. Should have read that Phil Car Vertical report, shouldn't I? I was in a rush to see what I've bought. Let's have a look inside then, see if the inside is as dirty as the outside. Oh yes. It hasn't disappointed, has it? Look at the state of this. It's full of gravel. I'm at the bottom of a fish tank. We've got seat covers on. Lots of wrappers here for boiled sweets. This one's raided a uh, doctor's waiting room there, haven't they? A suspicious little bag here with some plastic bits in, don't know what they are. Well, it stinks, it smells of dog, and you can see dog hairs everywhere. But let's not forget, it's £250, so I'm not too disappointed. Got an old Blaupunk stereo there. Cobwebs, have we got, yep, electric front windows. Manual ones in the back. It's filthy, but we've got, yeah, look at this. If I take these seat covers off, it's all quite clean under there. This is one of those cars that I could improve very quickly. Let's have a look under the bonnet and see what. Ah, 153 on the dial. Where's the bonnet release on these? Didn't hear anything then. This might be broken. Oh no. We've got a lift off here. Ah, diesel. 1.3, I think. So that'll be the same engine as in that Fiat Grande Punta that I filmed with recently. That's funny. I just tried to let my arm off that, and the bonnet hinges are so stiff, it'll hold itself up there without the bonnet stay. Bit of Italian engineering for you there. Well, the chassis legs are straight. It all looks like the engine bay of a 150,000 mile car, this, but it's not too rusty. J cloth for me there. Right, well, I've seen worse. Oh, that tells us on the door 1.3 16 valve multi jet diesel dynamic. Fire up. Wait for the glow plugs. Turn the heater off. Quite a noisy fan there, actually. Oh, yes. No warning lights on. What are the odds? Turn the wipers off. Oh, it's not as noisy as it once was. Windows, do they work? One works there. Another one. Perfect. £250 this. Quite pleased. I think £20 on a mini valet could transform this. Bin these horrible seat covers. And expose the uh, pleasantness underneath. Paperwork then. I shan't show you the specific details for fear of being sued okay so the year before I had an advice for a noisy wheel bearing ah right this explains the high mileage this has been owned by alphabet fleet management so that is the service history that's handy isn't it shows you everything that's been done and where it was done how helpful. Mm, very good. So it does have a bit of history then. Oh, we've got a book pack as well here. I have been spoiled with this. We'll look at the old service book. Well, I saw a couple of stuff. Oh, look at this. Right. It was serviced in 2010, 2012. Again in 2012, they did a lot of miles, didn't they? Again in 2012, they do 12,000 miles every three months. So by the time it was two years old, this had done 48,000 miles. Then I'm guessing it changed owners. Yeah, northeast car, Durham. 
and then nothing since 2013. That's not true because I've got some other prints off of there. Now this engine is a chain driven engine. So with a fresh oil and filter, this might be okay this. I've just had a thought, we've not looked in the boot yet, have we? What treasures await us back there? So we've got a split wiper blade, as we know, can repair that or replace that for a fiver. We've got a parcel shelf. Ah. New set of wipers there. Right, I think that's too big then for the for the rear, isn't it? But, well, hang on a minute. Hmm, looks used, doesn't it? Though? CDs and DVDs, 50p each. Someone's been doing a car boot in there, haven't they? Beanie Babies, pound. Plants, bin bag. I was hoping to see the wheel trim. Hmm, no such luck. That looks like the original spare, doesn't it, Pirelli? I feel like Fiat you'd, would use Pirellis. Hmm, right. Got some suspicious rope here. I quite like this car. Even the struts work. Look at that. In the back, we can take these covers off and give it a good clean. Oh, very good. Very good. Dimmer winders work. A bit stiff, but yes. I think we'll give it a drive then. We've got half a tank of diesel. The power steering works. Does it worth work on both sides? I would say it does. That's a real common issue with these, same as the Punto. You have this electronic power steering column, which tends to fail, and it's about £300 to repair. So had that gone on this, it wouldn't be worth fixing. Oh, nearly died then. Let me open the gate. I don't know about you, but I hate these. Look at the filth in that. It's disgusting. Those and steering wheel covers, put them in the bin. Right, and we are away. Didn't clunk over the little speed bump there. You know, I said I can't remember why I like these cars. When you drive one, you'll know exactly what I mean. They're just kind of, they're quite fun. You sit up high, everything's really accessible. It's just one of those cars which doesn't take itself too seriously. We've not done the old radio station check, have we? What was the previous owner list? Oh, look at that. 406 Coupe. What was the previous owner listening to? Moment of truth time. Classic. Classic FM. That tells you everything you need to know about the previous owner mature and had good taste. Well, apart from the engine being a little bit tappity, it drives very well. It might just be crying out for an oil change this. It might not have had one for a couple of years. We're in fourth gear. Goes into every gear fine. Fifth. Perfect. You know what, for 153,000 miles on a Fiat... Oh, hang on a minute. We've got a warning light. My little power steering lights come on. They know why. It's not gone heavy or anything, it all seems to be working fine. Might have to plug that in and see what's wrong with it. Does the city steering work? Where well, it goes really light, yeah, look at that. Very good. I think I've got a bit of a bargain here. Not sitting in our traffic, so we're going on a bit of a detour. Start to steam up here, though. This 1.3 litre turbo diesel engine will do about 60 miles per gallon. The turbo's engaging. Granted, it isn't the quickest thing in the world, but it is a 1300 cc engine. It's not a bad little car, this. I think what I'm going to do then is drop it in my local car wash, take off the seat covers, and ask them to do a, a quick vacuum out and wash. 
see what it looks like after that. If it looks okay, I might run it to my mechanics and get them to do a minor service, an oil and filter change. Let's we'll see how bad it is. I'll also ask them to plug it in and see why that little light's on. Don't like lights. I'm mildly impressed with this. It's all right. Whoa there, nearly wrote me off. 250 pounds. Bargain. This is the kind of car that if I spent 100 pounds on, I'm pretty sure I can advertise this at 795, 895, 995. Part exchange to clear. It might do somebody for a year or two. Right, on that note, I will catch up with you in a couple of days. Cheers, guys. And we're back. And I'm really pleased with the transformation on this one. It looks nothing like the car that you saw in that car park three or four weeks ago. It just shows you can make money from cars at any price point. Don't laugh now, but I'm actually thinking about keeping it. I just really enjoy driving it. There's something really liberating about driving something so tiny and valueless. When I first had the idea about keeping it, I thought this would make an ideal train station car. Just leave it in the train station car park and it doesn't really matter if it gets vandalized or stolen. Then I suddenly remembered I don't actually use the trains all that often. I think the last time I was on a train was about 1976. So the idea of keeping this as a train station car park car is a bit pointless. That's just me trying to create a reason to keep it. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm pretty sure there's profit in it. I've managed to keep the cost quite low on this one. So let me pull up somewhere scenic and I'll talk you through those costs. It's beautiful up here today. Everywhere's got a light dusting of white powder, like the top of a hand dryer in a Marbella public toilet. Got to be so careful driving in snow. What I should do is buy a set of winter tyres for this and then just use it as my winter beater. Winner beater. Here will do. Right, so where was I? Firstly then, I took it down to my mechanics for a oil and filter change and a set of wiper blades, front and rear, and a general check over. That cost me £109. Now, there are a few advisory items. So, firstly, there is slight play in the offside front ball joint. Neither here nor there. It doesn't clunk or anything. It's not hardly worth doing. Next up, both rear tyres are perished and they've only got three and a half millimetres of tread left. Uh, in addition to that, we've got an offside rear shocker casing is corroded. Front disc slightly corroded, but the pads are very good. Now, there's also a slight oil leak, which they suspected was possibly coming from the turbo and the sump. So what they've done is spray some brake cleaner on it just to clear it all up. And then they've told me to run it and then take it back there and see if they can identify where it's coming from. And also the auxiliary belts cracked and perished. So when I run it back there to see where the oil leak's coming from, I'll get them to change the auxiliary belt at the same time. It won't be an expensive job. So that was £109. In addition to that, I ordered a new wheel trim off eBay. Now, I could have stuck a set of Spurious wheel trims on it for £20, but instead, I thought the other three are matching. I'll order a genuine one. So that was £23 for a new used wheel trim, which I really begrudge paying for because it's not in the best condition. But anyway, we've got a complete set now and it does look quite genuine. Then I ordered a set of reg plates, which have instantly lifted it. I know you always mock, but trust me, they always lift a car. They cost me £12. I ordered a set of tailored mats from eBay. They cost me £15. Again, they just make the interior look really tidy. Such a quick, cheap fix. In between all this, I took it down to my valeters and left it for a full valet. Now, if you remember, it was a bit of a pigsty and they only charged me £50 and they've done an incredible job. I asked them to rip off the old seat covers and under the seat covers, they're all in really good condition. Apart from the driver's seat, actually, which has got a very small rip, but on 150,000 mile Panda, it's not worth repairing. But overall, it is in really good condition, this car quite surprised. I'm genuinely quite smitten with it, I don't know why. And that's it. So I paid £250 for the car, £109 at my mechanics, uh, £50 for a valet, £12 for some plates, £15 for some mats, and £23 for a wheel trim. So my total is, I've worked this out already, £459. I'm really pleased with that for £459. For example, I've just had my Range Rover serviced at Land Rover, and that cost me down a pothole then. That cost me significantly more than £459 just for a service. And this is 459 quid for this whole car. I'm genuinely thinking of keeping it. I'm not even joking. Just something really, really honest about it. I like it. Although I haven't spent a fortune on it, I could have kept those costs even lower had I done the work myself. I just haven't got the time. I could have quite easily shaved £100 off the cost of preparing this. But as anyone with a small business will tell you, sometimes you're better off spending your time doing other things. You can't do everything, so don't try. But I could have quite easily done 
had I been at the start of my career, then I'd have cleaned it myself, maybe given it a service myself, changed the oil and filter, changed the wipers. Although I did fit the number plates myself. That is all me. This little panda stands me under 500 pounds, and I'm pretty sure it's worth double that. I think I could sell this easily at 995, or even 1295. And I love doing deals like that. It's just a quick in and out profit in the bank. Well, I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you have any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.